Hey, before we jump into this awesome session of the Dealer Playbook podcast, because we value you so much as a listener, we have a free gift just for you. Head on over to the dealerplaybook.com slash lead and get instant access to your copy of the secret dealership lead generation blueprint. This is going to help you discover the six simple steps that will help you get more high quality car buyers all on autopilot and it's completely free. Head on over to the dealerplaybook.com slash lead and get yours now. Now back to business. This is the Dealer Playbook. Hey, thanks for clicking that download button and checking out the Dealer Playbook podcast. This is session number 66. I am Robert Wiseman, and hey guys, my main man, Michael Cirillo, he cannot be here with me today, so I do apologize. You have just me and our killer guest today on the Dealer Playbook, where every week we sit down with you know, authors, experts, consultants, um, in and out of the automotive industry to just you know drop value and give you access actionable, you know, tactics, tips, and strategies to help you kill it and crush it in today's automotive industry. Again, I'm Robert Wiseman. Michael Cirillo really wishes he was here today for this session, but again, he was a little tied up on some other things. So today's uh, guest has been called by the Wall Street Journal, a marketing guru. This guy has, uh, you know, written five books, um, one of them, New York Times bestseller, The Think Big Manifesto, also the author of one of my favorites. It's called Book Yourself Solid. And then his new book that's uh, getting ready to release, which we talk about the concept to that in today's session, our guest is Michael Port. Um, if you're not familiar with Michael, definitely check out michaelport.com. But uh, this guy is uh, one of the most sought after speakers out there in today's um, speaker circuit. Um, he's worked with some big, you know, companies, small companies, and again, written some great books. The ones I listed in his new one, which we talk about the concept in this session today, it's called Steal the Show from Speeches to Job Interviews to Deal Closing Pitches How to Guarantee a Standing Ovation for All the Performances in Your Life. Now, in this session with Michael, we really dive into um, what does that mean to you and for you as an automotive sales professional. He gives a lot of his insight about the automotive industry, his experiences with it, and so much more about how you can steal the show and get a standing O. So listen, it's just me. I don't have much to say. We're going to hop into this killer session with Michael Port. Check it out. All right, and we are joined with Mr. Michael Port. Michael, thank you so much for taking the time today, man. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. So, you know, to start this conversation, I know you have your new book out. Your uh, your uh, previous this was probably your pre your previous bestseller was the the book Yourself Solid, correct? It was one of them. Yeah, this yeah. is the sixth. Steal sixth. the show. Okay. Uh, the the third was on the New York Times bestseller list. So a number of them have done quite well, and a couple of them not as well. But <laughs> that's you know that's the way the world is when you're trying to produce things. You, you just don't know what's going to be a hit. You know, if Hollywood knew what was going to be a hit, they'd only make hits. Exactly. If publishers knew what was going to make hits. They don't. You know, same thing. Car manufacturers, if they knew it was going to make a hit, mm -hmm. they'd only produce hits. That's across the board, definitely. Yeah. So the new one is titled "Steal the Show." From speeches to job interviews to deal closing pitches, how to guarantee a standing ovation for all the performances in your life. Killer title. So I just wanted to start it there. Dive into like, tell, you know, tell, tell the person listening in, you know, what that means to them. Kind of like a breakdown of the steps of that and yeah. just your whole, uh, your whole angle on that. Sure. So it is a tour de force on public speaking for sure. And public speaking means that anytime you are speaking, you are in public. That's public speaking. Yeah. It's not just in front of a group of people. Anytime you are speaking, you are speaking in public. So it, it is a tour de force on public speaking techniques from the stage, but it's also focused on all the high stakes situations in your life. Because a job interview, a negotiation, a sales pitch, even meeting your future in-laws for the first time is a type of performance. Now, ideally, they're authentic. 
because the best performances in the world are the most authentic performances in the world. Because if people do not buy you, if they do not believe in you, then you can be the slickest performer in the world, but they're not going to buy from you. Mm -hmm. So what I focus on in Steal the Show is techniques that I learned when I was in the graduate acting program at NYU, and then what I mastered when I was a professional actor before I went into business and then became an entrepreneur. And because I look back and I realized a lot of the success I've had over the years was because of what I learned as a performer. And so now I've re-engineered those techniques for non-actors. So I've created a modern methodology, modern methodology for non-actors to use so that they can shine when the spotlight's on them. And any time the pressure's on, you've got to perform. Yep, no doubt about it. And I like that. And it's it's so you're saying that, okay, for it to be authentic, but is there a difference between it being authentic and being really you being yourself? Like, let's say when an individual is, you know, to, to build context with our audience, they're showing somebody the latest model, you know, somebody mm-hmm. that comes in, they're taking them around that. So you're saying with that performance, because it, it certainly is, and I think everybody will agree with that, um, is it you know, is being authentic and, and it being real, does it mean it's like you are acting the same way you are, not acting in a sense, but you're behaving the same way you would when you're at home with the wife and kids, or can it be an extent thereof or turned up a few notches? Yeah, it's an ex- it's 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 often an extension of. Now, we play lots of different roles in our life. And chapter three in Steal the Show is specifically focused on this, playing the right role in every situation. Because when you are at home with the kids, you're playing one role. When you are at work, you're playing another role. But each role should be authentic and it should be an expression of part of your personality. Okay. And there's certain parts of your personality that you just shouldn't bring in to work. They just are not necessary and they don't have a place. And same thing. There are certain parts of your personality that may not be uh, appropriate or, uh, you know, for your work as a father, frankly. Yes. And so what we're doing is we're increasing our social intelligence and great performers are very, very socially aware so that we know what parts of our personality to amplify in any given situation and based on the people with whom we're working. So you're going to interact with different personalities in different ways. Mm -hmm. Your voice will change depending on the person you are speaking with. You'll sound the same, meaning your tone of voice will be the same. You're not going to talk like this all of a sudden. You're going to sound like yourself, but your patterns will change. So if I'm down at the docks with a bunch of my friends and, you know, it's a rough crowd, you know, you, you're going to hear some rougher language, some rougher talk. You're going to hear shorter sentences. You're going to hear a lot of buddies, a lot of, hey, yo, what? You know, mm-hmm. it's going to get a little more choppy and intense and, and staccato. But if I am at a meeting with publishers in the book industry, you might hear different patterns in my speech. And they are all equally authentic because they are just parts of me. And one of the things that happens is we get constrained by an idea of who we are and who we are not. But we are much more than we think. Uh There is so much more to our personality than we think. And the most effective people, especially in sales, are the ones who have different styles of behavior, different ways of being. And those styles of behavior can change depending on the person that they are speaking with. Now, that's authentic. Think about it. Take a chameleon, for example. That's what I was just going to go into. Where does that fall when people say that? Is that the right analogy? Well, you know, usually a, a, you know, t- saying that someone's a chameleon is a negative. That's a put down mm-hmm. in some way. But why? A chameleon is as authentic as one can be. When a chameleon's on a green leaf, it's green. Mm-hmm. When a chameleon's on a red leaf, it's red. It's not pretending to be green. It's not pretending to be red. It is actually red and green. <laughs> fair, yeah. fair? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Exactly. So it's, it's true. Now, the difference is this. If you are playing at a role which is false and you are saying things that are not true, that are 
not in line with your beliefs or you're just lying, that's inauthentic. So sometimes people, uh, when, when, when they ask about performance and, or they ask about sales, they'll say, listen, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to, when I perform, I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be phony. Or when I sell, I don't want to be sleazy. You know, I, I don't want to be seen as, as sleazy and pushy. So of course I'll ask, well, are you phony? Are you sleazy? And of course they say, well, no, no, of course not. What are you talking about? I say, well, then you have no problem. Yeah. Because if you are not phony, you will not come off as phony. If you are not sleazy, you will not be sleazy. If you have integrity and you are authentic, then you will be authentic and have integrity. Okay. Very good. Yep. Yeah. And I agree with that. And I Look, think I that's... Give, yeah, let me let me let me give you one more example. Uh, there was a there was a car dealership that had asked for my advice. And they said, we want to come up with something really clever that would be a great promotional uh, tool. You know, something that would surprise people. I said, oh, okay, I've got an idea. Why don't you do something where for a number of days you bring in lie detectors and lie detector experts? Oh my Lord, that is brilliant. That's so good, yes. Right? Okay. And you hook all the, all the salespeople up to these lie detectors and all day long they wear them when they're having conversations with the customers. And of course you document that as well. Yeah, well you yeah. bring the press yeah. there. I mean, yes. you make it, you do it live, mm -hmm. yeah? He says, no, 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 we can't do that. I said, why can't you do that? He goes, because we lie. Mm. Well, okay then, there you are. So that's, you know, they're disingenuous. They can't do that. But another, you know, company that is actually honest could do that. So that's what I mean. You know, you're either honest or you're not honest. You're either mm. genuine or not genuine. This is, this to me is not uh, an issue that anybody has to worry about unless they are disingenuous. Yeah. And so, you know, for advice, what, what's the best way to kind of figure out that right, um, I don't know, not necessarily formula, but that right amount of like, you know, of how to shift yourself from, you know, per, to, to give that that stellar performance and still be yourself? Like, is there any kind of like formula or anything that you look into or like, I mean, how how, how does one go about finding that right voice for them? Mm -hmm. So there are two different considerations. One is finding your true voice. And then the other is adapting your voice to different sales situations. Yeah. Or your custom to or your target audience. Yeah, audience. exactly okay. right. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that's the other. And you know, yeah. each individual is going to be different because mm -hmm. people have different buying patterns, different personalities. Okay. Some people want to come in and do backslapping with you. And others want you to be very quiet and not it, say much at all. It, is it true you can't accustom to everybody? Should you look at it like that? Should you should you feel a certain way if, if you're not able to connect with that person by, you know, in, in doing these same same actions? It would, mm -hmm. if you can't. Can you hope to connect with everybody or that's no, just not possible? I don't think so. I think you can do your best, but I just don't think it's possible. In the first chapter in Book Yourself Solid, it's called the Red Velvet Rope Policy. And the Red Velvet Rope Policy is a filtration system, and it allows in only ideal customers. You know, people that energize you, they inspire you, but most importantly, they allow you to do your best work. Now, this is difficult if your organization is set up uh, so that you're on a round robin. If you got ups, you just have whoever's coming in the door. Mm -hmm. And the way that we set up our sales process is not by round robin, but by who we think is the best match for that particular personality. It's like inte have, intelligent lead distribution. Exactly. And we find it works a heck of a lot better. I mean, we also have happier uh, people working yeah. for us. Well, they just, you know. And, and, you know, that makes great sense. And, it, and, and it, you know what it makes me think about? And I know a lot of the, the auto dealers out there, they, they don't like to hear the, this company's name. But believe me, they're not doing anything, harming these dealers in any way. But Tesla does a great example of that. When you go into a Tesla showroom location, when you walk up to, especially like the mall based ones, I don't know. I know most of them are shopping mall based, but I don't know if they, they have yeah, yeah, the mall venues or not, but you go in and there's like one of each car there set up, but in front of each car is one person that's at each car. They have an iPad and it's kind of like you're talking directly with the T model, the model T guy. You're talking yeah. right with this guy. Like it's not somebody that like they have their experts. They present them as experts for each of those particular models. Yeah. It, the car industry is so interesting to me because I, I buy expensive cars 
Oh, and yeah. I have, what are you driving right now? Just for our right, listening. I'm driving the Escalade, oh, the okay. ESV, the oh. big one, mm-hmm. Mac Daddy. I I have now have three children. I'm getting married, so I went from one to three. Mac Daddy, nice. Yeah, so you know you got to have the big the big yeah. beast. We call it, we call her the beast. What color? Black or white? No, it's that graphite. Oh, graphite. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good call. I'm not a white car guy. Yeah. Easy to keep clean. Yeah. Well, that's right. Exactly. Yep. But but this one, uh, I love it. I absolutely love this car. This is one of my favorite cars that I've ever had, and I can't tell you how difficult it was to buy. Sometimes so I feel it like it wasn't. I, ba- and not to interrupt you, just uh, for yeah. context, it wasn't from the dealer that you purchased your previous vehicle from. I take no, it. It wasn't. The previous okay. ve- vehicle was a BMW. Okay. Oh yeah. And I was really. I was keeping that one. Yeah. And then I was going to get this new one because we had more people. So I said, we, we you know, if we're, we're going to take long trips, we're, these kids will kill each other if they're in this BMW. Fair enough. Continue. So I went to first. I went to look at the Suburban, and I drove it, and I liked it, but I don't know. I. I didn't I didn't fall in love with it. And and the the guy who was selling it to me was very excited about the suburban. And I said, Well, I want to look at the Cadillac, because I don't think you're gonna like the Cadillac. I said, Let me ask you a question. Just be straight up with me. Do you make less money if you sell a Cadillac than you do a, a suburban? Mm-hmm. They're owned by the same people, they're right next to each other, and they can show any cars from either place. He said, No, exactly the same. So, so why are you not why don't you give me the opportunity to select the car that I want? I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. Generally, I feel it's difficult to spend my money at these car dealerships. They, they don't call you back, even when they've got you, you know, waiting on the line. Like they, you know, you're, you're, they're, they're fishing, you're biting their bait and, and they're not on it. So I, I've always found it really quite remarkable. And this is just the general experience that I've had. Uh, but, but, you know, part of the reason I mention this is because part of the buying experience should be just that, an experience. Mm-hmm. And what is, a, what, is a, what is a night at the theater all about? An experience. So, for example, why, and this was, a, this was, in the old days it was CDs, now it would be an iPod. Why doesn't every guy and every gal who sells cars, why don't they have an iPad, I mean an iPod or their you know, iPhone or whatever, just stacked with every genre of music you could possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. So when you go on a test drive with somebody, you plug it in, you say, what's your favorite music? So I might say, Dave Matthews. And they yeah. go, great, Dave, coming up right now. Yeah. Boom. Or, you put Dave on. Yeah, because yeah. you can even just search YouTube for that matter too and play yeah. it through there if you don't have it. Or just ask them to install here. I have the hookup. Everything's right here. Even have the cable in there ready and let them hook up their unit exactly. so they can play. Okay, keep going. But, I like but that. The, so these are simple things, but they're theatrical. And so and when- it's definitely we, taking yeah. ownership too when you start playing your own music in the car and music Absolutely. You like. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you know, so that's, a, th- those kinds of things make the difference. The, 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 the way, the experience that we're creating for the people that we are trying to sell cars to is in large part, the, you know, going to be the, de- going to be the deciding factor between whether or not they buy. And I can go almost anywhere to buy the car. It's not hard today. I could just, you know, go over to Princeton and buy the Cadillac over there instead of over in Doylestown. Mm-hmm. It's not hard. And I ultimately bought this because I knew somebody who knew the, knew the manager of the entire uh, Fred Beans company. And when he found out that I was having trouble buying the car that I wanted to buy, he came in, took over, and I was treated like a king. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even, when he told me the, the price of it, I didn't even really you know, haggle Flinch. with him, negotiate. It was like, whatever. Okay, let's just get this done. Mm-hmm. Let's move on, right? Yep. Um, so, you know, the experience was so dramatically different. And this guy... He was a brilliant salesperson, the guy who managed the whole, I didn't buy a used car, but he came and helped me nonetheless. Uh, He managed the whole used car division. And I was so amazed by him because when I talked to him, I felt like I was talking to someone like me. But he and I are completely different. And I imagine most of the customers, when they talk to him, feel like they're talking to somebody just like them. And he's playing roles all the time, but he's still an authentic guy. He was straight up with me about everything, how much, you know, he was going to give me for the car that I was trading into him. You know, it, it was, it was all very straight up. So I don't think it's a particularly uh, complicated process, but I think that we need to work on our self-awareness if we want to be better performers. 
Because p- people think about performance as self-expression. That's, that's only part of the equation. Self-understanding is what allows us to connect with other people and be in the moment and improv in such a way that they enjoy. It connects with them. So do we know how we are perceived by others? Okay. Yeah. Very do good. we know how people perceive the way we look? Do we know how people perceive us based on the way we walk? So everything we say, everything we wear, everything we do says something about who we are. And people make very quick snap judgments about others. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to say that can't judge a book by its cover, but yet everybody does. Exactly. And look, in the the car, yeah, absolutely. In the car industry, it's worse because you're already going in there with a negative association. You're already going in there with your defenses up because you're figuring, all right, they're going to try to stiff me on the car. So even if you're going to a dealership that has the best reputation out there and they do business like the way that this this uh, used car guy manager helped you with your Escalade, even if they have the reputation of doing business like that, if you've never done business with them, you're walking in still with that perception, you know, that negative perception, no matter right. what. Yeah, that's right. So, exactly. OK, so getting close to wrapping this up, what is the like? So how does somebody practice this? How do they practice that? Is there a, is there a rehearsal? Is there, do you practice on live customers or like, how do you get this down? Yeah. See, rehearsal is huge. Rehearsal is a big deal. So if you're going to give a presentation of any kind and anytime a customer walks in, that's a sales presentation, going to give a presentation of any kind, you need to rehearse. And the only way that you can improv well is if you're well prepared. And we want to do as much rehearsal as we possibly can. So we do rehearsal with people that are not our customers because why waste, you know, I mean, why waste, why wait, why screw up on our customers? Why not start earlier and do and try new things and take risks uh, with people that are not our customers and then get feedback? Absolutely. Because it costs money to get people in the door in the automotive game. Certainly every person that comes in wanting to see a car. Like they they cost you money. Absolutely. So think about, so this is what we do. Normally in sales, one is told to have a goal and then do what it takes to achieve that goal. Make sense? Yeah. It's fair. Yeah, it's fair. Then the same thing is true for performance. A performer has an objective and the performer's goal is to achieve that objective no matter what. And the performer will try every tactic in the world to achieve that objective. Now, here's the thing. Are we trying tactics based on a bag of tactics that we have and we just pull out the tactics based on how we always pull them out or, you know, we were told to pull them out or do we make our choices deliberately based on the person next to us? Okay. Okay. So you kind of, you feed off of, of their energy, their profile, their, their attitude. So, okay. So let me ask you that. And, and I want you to go back to this, but to break into that, like big, a big thing that, that that's talked about a lot in the automotive industry is the sales process. Now, if mm-hmm. so, and, and you must demo, you must take this person for a test drive. X that's what X. I'm talking about. So if I come that, in and yes. I don't want to see the car, I'm a buyer. Yeah. Like, Listen, man, I've drove this thing a hundred times. I know more yeah. about this car than you, because there's people like that. They're like, I don't yeah. want to drive it. I know I want it. Let's get down to yeah. business. There's still that's management right. out there today. It's like, no, we request that you dr- select and drive a car. Yeah. Like, what, what do you feel uh, about that? I think it's insane. I think it's absolutely insane from a customer's perspective. You know, I feel like I want the people who are listening to listen to me as a customer, not just as uh, an author, but as a customer. I think it is absolutely insane to force people into a process that they don't want to be in. I cannot, the math on that makes no sense to me. Yeah. Well, the net net of asking somebody to do something they don't want to do when they're already ready to buy. You're starting at a negative right there, right? You're already hitting it, hitting an obstacle. So that was one of the things that happened often to me in the last couple car buying processes. mm -hmm. They trying to force me into driving the car quite quickly. And I often don't need that process. I agree. Because I may have been to another dealer and already driven the car. 
Mm-hmm. Or I'm not. It's not even that big a deal to me. I know that if I'm buying, if I'm spending a, seventy or yeah. eighty large, I know it's going to drive well. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, I'd like to drive it, but I want to know. I want to do some deals. I want to do some terms before I get in that thing because otherwise, it's just a waste of time. Okay. So a you, lot. What they so. say is, I understand. So a lot of what they recommend, and I've heard, is then. Okay, so every step of the sale is kind of a close. You're you're basically selling that and closing on each step of the sale to control the process, not necessarily the prospect, but the process. So even if it's so, even if I turn around and sell them then the value of driving it or me showing it to them, do you even recommend that that's something that somebody do like turn around and be like, "Well, sir, you know that blank, 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 blank. I guarantee I'll show you something that you haven't seen previously. Like, or do you recommend trying to sell that aspect of it or just like kind of accommodate them? I don't, because if you're trying to control the sales process, you are trying to control the person. You see, Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. If, if the person doesn't want to a particular step in that sales process, but you're trying to control the sales process, then you're trying to control that individual. So, This flexibility that is required in the modern age of selling is so incredibly important. Now, one of the reasons that I don't think management wants to allow uh, too much flexibility is because they don't trust their sales people. Well, and they probably they haven't are, showed them the right way either, too, in the end. Exactly. Well, that's a whole other conversation. But Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly right. I mean, look, I get fired up about this stuff because I think that it's actually a lot easier uh, than we make it out to be. Uh, there are little things that make the difference in the experience. So when I walk into the dealer, if I don't see a whole bunch of people jump out of their chairs and come over to me quickly, I think they don't want my money. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm looking around waiting for someone to... And so there's, there's some things that we do in business that, that just screw up sales left and right that are so easy to fix that sometimes it's mind boggling. And it's not even necessarily intentional on their end, because in the end, of course they want your money, but they're not react. The people there, they haven't shown, they haven't drilled it into their team and those guys there to make that, that clear. Of course, they're going to take your money, but it's that still that perception of that, that that's the cover of that book still. You know, That's it's exactly part of the right. performance, right? Yeah. You know, the, the four guys are sitting down. They look up. They, I walk in. They look back down. It's because, well, I'm not up right now. So this guy doesn't mean anything. Yep. Or like yeah. I just sold one. I got somebody over there. Oh, man, look at this guy, man. He doesn't look like he's buying this and that. Exactly. Like just pre-qualifying. Yeah, that's, yeah that is the, the pre-qualifying there is dangerous because, you know, someone like me, I have a, you know, I have a, I have a fair amount of, uh, of capital and, uh, you know, I might go in there wearing flip flops, jeans and an old T-shirt. Yeah, you're off. You're doing your thing. You know what I'm yeah. Exactly. You so up. like I get look, we get fired up about this because, you know, we know what's possible for the people who are in the industry. We know what they could be doing uh, if they had some more freedom and if they, you know, took the initiative and, and took some of this into their hands to create a better experience based on performance for the people that are walking through the door, if they were... Uh, continue to study themselves and understand how others perceive them as performers. Because that's one of the things that I address in the book. When you're a performer, you can see yourself as you are performing. So for example, if I'm on stage giving a speech, I can actually watch myself while I perform. I know it sounds kind of crazy and I'm not crazy. Well, how do you do that? You step outside of your realm or what? To a certain extent, Yeah. yeah. I, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's like athletes when they get into the zone, everything slows down and they can see what's happening second by second. And it feels like it's minute by minute. Yeah. So when I walk off stage, I know exactly what I said. There's, I never come off stage and go, Oh wait, what did I do? Uh, and of, and usually an amateur comes off stage going, I have no idea what I said. What did I do? Uh, you know, they, they forget because mm-hmm. they don't see themselves while they're doing it. And that's one of the things that we need to develop uh, as, you know, as performers uh, of, of all stripes is to see ourselves with the person that is sitting in the car with us or across the desk ourselves and try to figure out how the other person sees us. Because the way they see us will influence whether or not they want to do business with us. 
And then we can adjust our way of being, our style of behavior, the things we're doing and saying, the way we're speaking. For example, uh, this same guy that I was trying to buy the Cadillac from, when we would go look at a car, he would walk very quickly to the car in the big parking lot. And he's, he was about 6'4", and he had very long legs, and I'm 5'10". Mm. And he would walk ahead of me, walk faster than I would normally walk. And, you know, it was kind of rude. So I said to him uh, after about, um, about 45 minutes of, of, uh, of interacting with him, I said, you know, you walk really fast. He goes, yeah, yeah, I always walk really fast. You know, that's, uh, that's what people tell me. I said, do you know that when you leave someone behind when you're walking with them, it's a dismissive act? You turn your back on them straight up. Straight up, and yeah. you can't have a conversation with them. Yeah, and then they need to feel like they're keeping up with you, but your job should be to keep up with them, not the other way around. He said, "Yeah, people told me that, but I never realized it was a problem." So he he knew that he did that, but wasn't able to recognize how it affected others. So even if we know we are a certain way, we need to then ask ourselves, how does that influence other people? Absolutely. And, 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 and going back to that, like the, a big thing they talk about in the industry is skipping those steps and making sure you take them on the test drive. Well, I mean, honestly, if somebody comes in and they don't want to test drive the car, they've driven it, they know exactly what they want. They're educated. They're ready to sit down and hammer it out. Well, listen, whether you test drive them or not, they're still going to work. They're still going to go down in negotiations and it's going to be a tough deal. So it's like, if you're going to make it, you know, a mini deal or a smaller deal, you know, you might as well make it fast. Yeah, right. Exactly. In and out, right? Exactly. Make the deal. And also sometimes people, you know, we're just using this uh, test drive as one example, but there may be people who don't really care that much about the test drive, don't know that much about the car, don't know much about uh, the, you know, the... But their the, decision is based fully off of price. It's based off price or they just looked at it and it looks cool or they don't really care that much about cars. It's just transportation for them. I, I, I you know like it, that's what I, I, you know, it boggles my mind because it's like you don't want to take what if just what if this person that doesn't want to test drive it doesn't know anything but's ready to sit down and see figures. What if they are a and I'm doing the air quotes. You can't see yeah. me a lay down. Or yes, just exactly. the person that just they're yeah. going to ink right up. I mean, if yeah. they are like, wouldn't it be a shame to take them through everything? <laughs> you know, <laughs> be a lot of time, a lot of time unnecessarily used. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, Michael Port, thank you so much, man, for taking the time for us today. I'm so excited to dive into this new book. So you have the the uh, another one I strongly recommend that I loved is is book yourself solid and that's still available. Where where what to to get? We'll talk about your new one in a second. But where where do you recommend they go for to to get more information off that that one? I, that was powerful to me. That's why I recommend. Sure. Yeah, bookyourselfsolid.com is a great place to go for all things book yourself solid. You can buy book yourself solid anywhere books are sold. The edition that I'd recommend people get is the book yourself solid illustrated edition. It's a couple more bucks. But it's all illustrated, so you read it faster because you can see the concepts rather than just read about the concepts. So it's like a comic things. book, you're telling me? It's it's not comic. It's not comical, although once no, in a while I, I try know, to tell a good joke. The, but yes, it, the, it, is, doesn't, it doesn't look like a comic book, but there are illustrations, hand-drawn illustrations that are really, really cool. Equivalent to like a graphic novel, maybe? Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's Closer awesome. to that. Closer I to really that. think that that's the few, That's going to get bigger and bigger, in my opinion. You oh, know, it is. In business, no in, in an educational type of format, too, not yeah. just storytelling. Yep, steal the show, and you can go to stealtheshow.com, and there's a ton of free bonuses that we're giving away right now uh, because the book is just released, and we do that around the release of the book. And of course, anywhere books are sold. But I also recently dropped a podcast called Steal the Show with Michael Port. So uh, go uh, look that up in yep. iTunes. Go subscribe, uh, rate it, review it. I think you'll love it. And. If That's it, man. I will link to all that in the show notes. Mr. Cool. Port, thanks a million for being here, man. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. Thanks for having yes, me. Yes, sir.
And there you have it. That was, again, the author of the book, Hitting Shelves, Steal the Show, which you can check out at stealtheshow.com. That was Mr. Michael Port. Um, I had a great time with that one. I thought Michael brought some great information and insights, um, some new angles, and then also just some more like, you know, solidifying some things that past guests said. So, I mean, it's like how many more, uh, you know, hard hitters got to come up here and, you know, give us this kind of information before we start executing. So remember, check out his previous book if you haven't, Book Yourself Solid. That is perfect for anybody in, in automotive sales. Um, he, he mentioned bookyourselfsolid.com or anywhere where it's sold, Amazon, wherever. I'll have, we'll have links to everything in the show notes. Uh, check out michaelport.com. Also, stealtheshow.com. And while you're out there, head on over to the dealerplaybook.com slash 66. Check out all the links and everything that have to do with this episode. And do me a solid, man. Hop on over to iTunes. And if you haven't left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you're listening to podcasts, throw the Dealer Playbook a review, man. We would appreciate the love. So until next time, crush it out there and have a great month.